Well, good morning, Parker's Cove Church family. It's uh, Tuesday, uh, May the 12th, and uh, I hope that uh, you are continuing uh, to manage well as we, uh, I guess we're getting close to two months now that, um, that we haven't been able to fellowship in one another's company. Um, but I have been praying for you, and I trust you've been praying for me and for my family as well, uh, that we keep our hearts close to the Lord as we uh, we wait for uh, hopefully some uh, further reduced restrictions that will allow us to be a little bit more free and mobile around and Lord willing in time to get together in fellowship again. Uh, let's continue in our study series, in our devotional series in the Gospel of Mark. We're in chapter 2 today. going to read uh, verses 1 to 12, so if you'd like to follow along, uh, that's where we are today says this, and when he had come back to Capernaum, that is Jesus, several days afterward, it was heard that he was at home, and many were gathered together so that there was no longer room, even near the door, and he was speaking the word to them. And they came bringing to him a paralytic uh, carried by four men, and being unable to get to him on account of the crowd, they removed the roof above him. And when they had dug an opening, they let down the pallet on which the paralytic was lying. And Jesus, seeing their faith, said to the paralytic, My son, your sins are forgiven. But there were some of the scribes sitting there and reasoning in their hearts, Why does this man speak that way? He's blaspheming. Who can forgive sins but God alone? And immediately perceiving, Jesus, perceiving in his spirit that they were reasoning that way within themselves, said to them, Why are you reasoning about these things in your hearts? Which is easier to say to the paralytic, Your sins are forgiven? Or to say, Arise, take up your pallet, and walk? But in order that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, rise, take up your pallet, and walk. And he rose and immediately took up the pallet and went out in the sight of all. And they were all amazed and were glorifying God, saying, We have never seen anything like this. And so as we've left uh, chapter 1 uh, of Mark, we read at the closing uh, verse of that chapter that the popularity of Jesus had grown to such an extent uh, that he had to stay away from populated areas. He stayed out in, more in the countryside, and people were coming to him uh, to listen to his teaching. But here in this particular passage, he has slipped back into Capernaum, which uh, we glean from the scriptures was kind of a home base uh, during Jesus' public ministry. Uh, so he slips back in and he's in somebody's home and um, he's teaching there and word's gotten around and a crowd's gathered and they're, uh, they're gathered at the door and, and they're listening to Jesus teach. And as he's teaching, um, there's a ruckus on the roof of this house. Now in biblical times, the, the roof of the house was flat. And in this particular case, the house was, um, uh, Luke tells us in his account, uh, that the uh, the roof was made of tile. And so somebody's making some ruckus on the roof. They're removing some of the tiles, and undoubtedly there's some dust falling in this um, this common area in this particular owner's home. I always wondered how the owner of that home uh, kind of thought about uh, somebody ripping the roof off his house. Uh, but anyway, they, they make a hole big enough, and they start lowering this guy down on his pallet uh, right at the feet of Jesus. And Jesus shows absolutely no surprise. There's, there's no shock even suggested there. And it says he looks at the faith of these guys, and then he looks down at the paralytic and makes this wonderful statement, my son, literally it says, my child, my child, your sins are forgiven. Now, on this particular occasion, in the crowd, it's just not the local folks, to, just not the, the common people in town, but some of the Jewish religious leaders have made their way um, up to Galilee to listen to Jesus. In fact, Luke also uh, tells us that some of the religious teachers and the scribes um, uh, from all over the villages in Galilee, as well as Judea and even Jerusalem, had come. They're, they're coming to do some investigating 
uh, of this uh, this rabbi that they've heard about who's teaching and performing miracles. And so they're uh, present when um, Jesus is teaching and then he conducts this miracle. But when Jesus says, my son, your sins are forgiven, you know, they, they just gasp and, and shudder like, what? They're, and they didn't say this out loud. It's as they reasoned this in their hearts. How does this man, why does this man speak this way? That's blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. But Jesus discerns what's going on in their heart. And so he poses the question, uh, which is easier to say? Your son's, uh, son, your sins are forgiven or rise, take up your pallet and walk. And he says, but in order that you may know that the son of man has authority on earth to forgive sins. He turns to the paralytic and says, arise, take up your pallet and walk. And he does. To the amazement of people, and we talked about how amazed people were at the teaching of Jesus, and they're amazed uh, again at, at, uh, at what Jesus has done by performing this act of healing, and they're giving glory uh, to God in this particular moment. Now, in this, uh, this great moment of healing, there's a few things that we could pull out and talk about today, but I'm just going to leave you with one thing to think about, and that's that word authority. Jesus said that you may know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive uh, sins. Um, that word conveys the sense of dominion and power over uh, something. Jesus, we've seen, has power over um, demonic forces. We've read about his power over disease. We we see his power demonstrated over an invalid here, a man who, who can't walk, who can't move his uh, limbs. But now there's a new dynamic that he adds into his authority. And he says, you know what? I also have the authority to forgive the sins of people. Now, the Jewish religious leaders were right in their understanding of, of scriptures from the oracles of God, in their understanding of the character of God, that only God had that authority. And man's part was to carry out these various uh, sacrifices in which animals died and blood had to be shed in order for sins to be forgiven. So they're, they're, they're just operating out of their understanding of things. But Jesus is trying to do more than demonstrate his power. He's trying to reveal his person. And that's one of the things that we need to be mindful of as we look through the Gospels and we read about the, uh, the many miracles that Jesus performed. Uh, these were, yes, they were in part acts of compassion and sympathy and, and mercy in people because Jesus cared about the suffering of human beings. But his demonstrations of power were also intended to reveal who he was, that he was the Son of God. I want to actually give you one verse from the Gospel of John today uh, to supplement what we're reading here. In John chapter uh, 5, Jesus is talking to his disciples about the testimony of John the Baptist, how John the Baptist bore witness to who he was. But then he says this in John chapter 5 and verse 36, but the witness which I have is greater than that of John, for the works which the Father has given me to accomplish, the very works that I do, bear witness of me that the Father has sent me. So these various manifestations of power that Jesus displayed were also intended to give witness to the fact that he had come with God uh, from God, that he was in fact God among them, God with man, the one who holds absolute and all authority in the heavens and the earth. And so as we continue to make our way through, let's be mindful of why Jesus is performing these miracles that's beyond the compassion that he has. We want to see that in his character because he is such a compassionate savior. But we also want to see him demonstrating the full breadth of his authority in revealing to us who he is. He is the Son of Man. He is also the Son of God. The fullness of deity, Paul would later say in Colossians, uh, dwelt among us in human form. And so today, as uh, we go through uh, whatever our day involves, 
uh, let's also be mindful of his authority uh, over our lives and over our hearts. Remember, just as he read the thoughts and intentions and reasonings of the hearts of the Jewish leaders um, who questioned how he could say such a thing, so uh, Jesus also knows the reasonings and the intents and the motives of our hearts as well because he has that authority. And so let's recognize that authority and be subject to his authority in how we conduct ourselves today and the choices that we make in the way we treat one another, um, and uh, let's honor him in these things. So God bless you. Keep this word near to your heart today, and uh, Lord willing, we'll talk to you again in a couple of days. God bless you, everybody.